Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install a very easy on off button on your Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. This is called the Borkin button. A friend over at Facebook named Matt Borkin came up with the idea. Now I'll leave links to these in the description. They go on like iPhones and Android phones and things like that. They go right in the headphone jack. Here it is on the Pi itself. Now you will need to solder. I'm not gonna go over the soldering instructions. If you can't follow this tutorial here, you don't need to be soldering on the back of your Raspberry Pi anyway. So all you'll need is one wire and the button, plus we're gonna run a script. So this is the 3.5 millimeter audio jack ground right here. And we're gonna move over to this pin here. So if you're looking at your Pi from upside down, it's the third one on the top row. I've already cut a wire that's going to be pretty much the perfect length. As you can see, we're going to solder it right there to the third pin on the GPIO header. And here it is all soldered up. I have my button plugged into my 3.5 millimeter audio jack and it's soldered up. That's all we need to get this button up and running. I also have a Raspberry Pi 2 that I did. It looks a tad different on the bottom, but here it is. Same spot, third pin from the top row over and your 3.5 millimeter audio jack ground. So here's a little picture I put together for you guys. Study this. This is the Raspberry Pi 3 here, but it's the same as the Raspberry Pi 2. Some of the pins may look a little bit different underneath these, but it's in the same position. So now that you have your button in place and your wire soldered up, it's time to install the script. But first, we're just going to go and enable SSH within RetroPie. Let's move over there now. All right, guys, we're going to be installing the script from a PC. So you need to be connected to the same exact network as your PC. And we also need to enable SSH within RetroPie. We're going to go to the RetroPie menu, find RasPi config, scroll down to number five, interfacing options, SSH. Yes, you would like to enable SSH server. Press OK. Now we can go down to finish and back out. So this will work over Ethernet or Wi-Fi, but like I said, you have to be connected to the same exact network. We're going to be moving over to the PC now and installing PuTTY. It's one line, it's one URL that we have to put in, and it's going to automatically install the script for us perfectly. Let's move over there now. All right, guys, we're going to be heading over to 8bitjunkie.net. Now, he sells these pie carts that are really cool, these bezels and fully made pie carts. They're amazing, but he also hosts the shutdown script. If you read through this, he tells you exactly what to do, and he also tells you how to do it from the pie itself. But we're going to be using PuTTY, and all we're going to need to do is connect to our Raspberry Pi using PuTTY and paste this in the terminal. It's gonna automatically download everything we need and install our shutdown script. Let's go ahead and get PuTTY. Very safe application. There's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. I'm gonna go with the 64. Mine's already installed, but all you do is double click it, install it like an application. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I will also leave a text file down below that contains this. Copy. I'm going to find PuTTY on my PC. My host name will be the IP of my Raspberry Pi or RetroPi. Make sure SSH is checked here. Click Open. Warning, potential security breach, click yes. Our username is Pi and our password is Raspberry. 
So we are now connected to our Raspberry Pi remotely, and we're just gonna paste this code right here. Press enter. Just give it a little bit of time because it needs to download some stuff and install it. It'll tell us when it's done. We'll need to reboot the Pi one time and our button should be working from there. Everything's done installing. You can either go back to the Pi and reboot or you can type in sudo reboot. It's gonna disconnect us because our Pi is rebooting. There we go. And we can move back over to the Raspberry Pi. All right, guys, here it is. Everything's installed. The script went fine. Got the wire soldered and the button on. Press it one time. It's gonna automatically shut down for us. Give it a few seconds. The green light's flashing. When it's done, you can turn it back on. One press. And there you have it. Brooken button installed on your Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. The one in my hand right now is a Raspberry Pi 2 because I put my 3 back in my case. I want to show you some pictures of those at the end of this and I will also leave a diagram on screen for a few seconds at the end of this video. You can pause it if you need help figuring out where the wire goes. I'm going to shut this down one more time after we boot up. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe, I'm leaving all links down below. There are some Amazon links so you can go purchase these little 3.5 millimeter audio buttons. They're pretty cool. Here's a few pictures of my flirt case and my wicked aluminum case with this install. Like always, thanks for watching.